When most novice investors run numbers on a rental property, they only look at four categories, mortgage, property tax, utilities, and insurance. Anything beyond those totals is considered money in their pocket. But if you run your numbers in that way, you're going to see that you're probably losing money each month, which means that this is not an asset anymore, it's a liability. I'm gonna show you how to properly run your numbers on a rental property so that you, yes you, can make money instead of spending it. Stick around to the end of the video where I'll show you how to calculate if a property will make money in under 10 seconds. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you take your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. It's important to know how to run your numbers on a rental property for two reasons. First, you have to be able to tell whether a property is going to make you money or lose you money. Secondly, this is useful for comparing properties or potential investments. If we're always using the same parameters for any deal we analyze, we can quickly tell which investments we want to pursue. Here's how you should be running your numbers on a rental property. Say we are looking to acquire a property that's worth $400,000 and we get a mortgage on that property for $320,000. At today's interest rates, our monthly mortgage payment would be about $1,500 a month. Let's estimate that on this property, we would also have to pay $250 a month in property taxes, $150 a month in utilities, and $100 a month in insurance. Add that all up and our total monthly expenses are $2,000. If this property could rent for $2,400 a month, using only these four expense categories, we would estimate that our cash flow would be $400 a month. But hold on a second. We are missing four major categories that will turn this from a positive cash flow property into a negative cash flow property. Here are the ones you need to add in order to run your numbers properly. First up, vacancy. It's not a matter of if you will have a vacancy, it's when. Make sure you have enough money in your accounts to cover your property for when it's vacant. I use a minimum of 5% of my gross monthly revenue for vacancy allowance. If your vacancy rate in your area is higher than 5%, you have to use the higher number. If you look at that $2,400 a month rent on that property, for example, 5% of that is $120 a month. You might think that's a lot, but consider this, it takes 20 months to build up enough vacancy reserve to cover one month of the property being vacant, which means you can only have your rental property sit empty for one month every one and a half years. The next new category you want to include is property management. I allocate 10% of the gross revenue for property management. I include the 10% even if I'm managing my own properties for three major reasons. The first is because we always need to run numbers on our rental properties the same way. If I have one property that I'm managing myself and I have one that I have to pay a property manager for and I don't include property management for them both, that will skew my numbers. The second reason is there might come a day when you don't wanna manage the properties anymore. Then you can hire someone else to manage that property with that money and it will not affect your cash flow in any way. The third reason is that if you are managing your own properties, you'll be dedicating time to doing so. And as we all know, time is money. I'm not sure about you, but I do not like to work for free, except of course, to produce YouTube content. If I'm managing my own properties, I wanna get paid for my time. Here's a little hack for you. Talk to your accountant about setting up a management company so you can filter expenses through that company and write off the expenses. You'll have to pay less tax on the money you earn inside of your rental properties and you can pay yourself through the new company. The third category is repairs and maintenance. I like to allocate 5% of the gross revenue each month for repairs and maintenance. This is on a standard run-of-the-mill rental property. If you have a condo or a new property, I'll let you drop down to 3% for the first five years, but after that you should bump it up to 5%. If you have an older property or one that has a lot of deferred maintenance, you'll need to up this number to at least seven to 10%. What kinds of expenses are allocated to repairs and maintenance? These would be unexpected items that come up like pest control, appliance repair, locksmith charges, and general repairs that come up when a tenant moves out or in. What's not included in this number are actual property maintenance items like snow removal and lawn care, which leads to my next point. The last category I like to include is miscellaneous items. There are a variety of items that can be included in the miscellaneous category. Depending on your rental property and the way you run your business, these can vary. But I will give you some general miscellaneous categories that you may want to look at. Capital expenditures. These would be large ticket items like repairing a roof or replacing a furnace and air conditioning unit. Snow removal and lawn care. If you have a property with more than one suite, I would suggest including an expense line for snow removal and lawn care, as it will be more difficult to divide up what your tenant's responsibilities will be for these items. Tenant gifts. I'm a big fan of reciprocity with my tenants, so I allocate about 1% of the gross revenue to tenant gifts. 
I give my tenants about three gifts per year, which establishes a relationship with them. It's by no means going to solve all of your tenant problems, but I find it goes a long way for a very small investment. Accounting and bookkeeping. Let the pros do what they do best, such as accounting and bookkeeping, and include this expense in your numbers. Trust me on this one, you'll be grateful to pass off these two items, especially when it comes time to really grow your business. And finally, anything else relevant to your property. This could be advertising, elevator maintenance, a site supervisor, cleaning, and so on and so on. For our example, let's include one more category, tenant gifts, and assume that you'll let a reserve fund build in your property account to cover capital expenditures when they come up. Back to the calculations with our new categories included. We have our monthly expenses of $1,500 a month for the mortgage, $250 for the taxes, $150 for utilities, $100 for insurance, $120 for vacancy, $240 for property management, $120 for repairs and maintenance, and $25 for gifts. Now our total with all eight of these expense categories is $2,505 a month. And if we're only collecting $2,400 a month in rent, we have negative cash flow of $105 per month. We thought this property was going to be paying us $400 each month. We're now in the hole over $100, which is a $500 a month swing. That's $6,000 a year. You can see why it's important to run your numbers properly and include any and all expense types. If we were looking at this property, I would pass due to the negative cash flow. Make sure you are also running your numbers on a regular basis because due to many factors and ever-changing interest rates, things can change often. As promised, I wanted to share a quick tip to tell if a property will make money in 10 seconds or less. If a property is selling for $400,000 and the monthly rental amount is equal to or greater than 1% of the purchase price, there is a very good chance that this property will make money every single month. Now this cannot be used as a substitute for running your numbers properly, but if a property meets the 1% rule, or in other words, if the property could rent for $4,000 a month or more, there is a great chance you will make money each month on this property. If you'd like to learn more about how to run your numbers properly on a rental property, you can check out my free masterclass webinar on my website at darrenboros.com. I'll also leave a link for it in the description below. If you have questions related to running your numbers or anything else real estate investing related, leave those in the comments section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on Tuesday.